Welcome to Beyond the Light. I am Charlotte, and today I will tell you an extraordinary story that will keep you glued until the last second. Imagine living a normal life with a brilliant career, a loving family, and a mission to save the planet. Then in an instant, everything changes. A terrible car accident catapults Mary, our protagonist, into a dystopian future where humanity has paid the highest price for its negligence. But I won't say more. I'll leave you to the story. Pond, enjoy listening. My name is Mary Thompson, and I am a biologist. Since I was a child, nature has always fascinated me. I still remember the long summer days spent in the woods near my home where I would carefully observe the insects moving among the leaves and trees. Every tiny detail of the life developing around me was a source of wonder and amazement. My first scientific adventures included collecting plant samples and cataloging the species I found in my little diary, where I meticulously recorded every discovery. Growing up in a small town surrounded by forests and rivers, I spent hours observing insects, collecting leaves, and studying animal behavior. This love for nature pushed me to pursue a career in biology, and after years of study, I obtained a Ph.D. in molecular biology. I currently work at a prestigious research institute, where I primarily focus on the effects of climate change on natural ecosystems. My mission is to find solutions that can help save our planet. Every day, I wake up with the awareness that my work could make a difference, even if small, for the future of Earth. However, my life is not just about work. I am married to Tom, a wonderful man who supports me in everything, and together we have two children, Emily and Jake. One spring morning, while on my way to work, my life changed radically. It was a day like any other. I had woken up early, prepared breakfast for my family, and headed to the lab. The sun was shining high in the sky, and I felt optimistic about the progress of my research projects. My mind was full of ideas and plans for the future, and I couldn't wait to start a new day of work. As I was driving on the country road leading to my lab, a vehicle coming from the opposite direction suddenly swerved into my lane. I tried to steer to avoid the collision, but there wasn't enough time. The impact was violent and devastating. I felt excruciating pain and then suddenly a sensation of detachment from my body. It was as if my consciousness had been ripped from physical reality and projected into a completely different dimension. I found myself suspended in a space of light and absolute silence. I couldn't understand what was happening. I felt light, weightless, and at the same time fully aware of myself and the world around me. I began to feel a strange attraction, as if I were being pulled toward a source of intense light. It was a warm and welcoming light, which seemed to envelop and protect me. As I approached this light, images began to form before my eyes. I found myself in a place that could not be our world. It was a distant future, a future that I knew to be the year 2300. What I saw left me speechless. Ruined cities, landscapes devastated by nuclear wars and extreme climate changes. The sky was permanently covered with gray and toxic clouds and the air was unbreathable. The earth itself seemed to scream in pain from the wounds inflicted by humanity. The streets were deserted, and the few people I saw seemed to be barely surviving. Once majestic buildings were reduced to piles of rubble, and vegetation, once lush, was now almost entirely extinct, I felt overwhelmed by the desolation and sadness of what I saw. Every corner of that future world spoke of suffering and destruction. I saw rusted car carcasses, remains of advanced technologies now useless, and ruins of infrastructures that once were symbols of progress and modernity. 
The air was saturated with an acrid, metallic smell, and I could feel the weight of the toxic substances polluting it. The sunlight filtered through the toxic clouds, creating an oppressive and ghostly atmosphere. Every breath was difficult, and the feeling of oppression was palpable. The silence was broken only by the whistling of the wind through the deserted streets and the remnants of buildings. I felt deep sadness for what humanity had done to its planet. However, despite the devastation, I glimpsed signs of hope. Amidst that desolate landscape, small groups of survivors were rebuilding a new society. These communities were based on values of solidarity, respect for nature, and a profound sense of collective responsibility. They used advanced technologies to live in harmony with the environment and to prevent further damage. I observed these survivors with a mixture of amazement and admiration. Despite the difficulties, they had found a way to thrive and to heal the wounded planet. Their determination and resilience deeply inspired me. In those people, I saw a reflection of my own desire to make a difference, to fight for a better future. I felt renewed in my mission, convinced that, despite everything, there was still hope. I saw families cultivating community gardens, using sustainable agricultural techniques to bring life back to a devastated land. Children played and studied in improvised schools, where they learned not only traditional sciences, but also the importance of living in harmony with nature. People collaborated with each other sharing resources and knowledge to build a better future. They had developed new technologies for purifying water and air, harnessing renewable energies to power their communities. Every small gesture of these survivors was an act of resistance and hope. It seemed that they had deeply understood the mistakes of the past and were doing everything possible to avoid them. It was as if the devastation had awakened in them a new sense of responsibility and a burning desire to protect what remained of their world. I felt deeply inspired by their resilience and their ability to find beauty and hope even in the most desperate circumstances. Suddenly, I felt pulled back, away from those visions. The futuristic world vanished, and I found myself again in my body lying on the road next to my wrecked car. The pain had returned, but along with it was a new awareness. I knew I had to do everything possible to prevent the devastating future I had seen. I had received a sort of warning, an opportunity to change things before it was too late. After the accident, I decided to dedicate my life to raising public awareness and working tirelessly to prevent environmental disasters. The near-death experience had given me a clear vision of what could happen if humanity didn't change its course. I used this vision as a driving force to push my efforts forward, convinced that the future could be different if people acted responsibly and consciously. I committed myself to spreading the message of hope and action inspiring others to join me in the fight to save the planet. Thus began my journey, not only as a scientist, but as a beacon of hope and determination, inspiring others to join me in the fight to save the planet. I was determined to do everything possible to prevent the future I had seen from becoming a reality. I knew the road would be long and difficult, but I was ready to face every challenge, armed with my passion and my faith in humanity's ability to change and do the right thing. We have just listened to Mary's incredible story. Her vision teaches us a powerful and urgent lesson. We cannot afford to ignore the warnings coming from all sides. Our planet is in danger and the time to act is now. Mary returned from her journey with a clear mission to do everything possible to prevent the catastrophic future she had seen. And us? What are we willing to do to change our destiny? Let's reflect on this. Every small gesture, every conscious decision, 
can contribute to a positive change. Mary's story inspires us to look beyond our small personal worlds and see the impact we can have collectively. We must not wait to experience something extreme to understand the importance of our daily actions. We have the power to create a different future, a future where science, innovation, and solidarity can guide us towards a more sustainable and just world. But we must start now. We must be like Mary, courageous and determined to make a difference. Thank you for listening to this story. I hope it has inspired you as much as it has inspired me. Remember, the future is not written. It depends on us. Keep following our channel for more stories that remind us of how precious our planet is and how we can protect it together. See you soon.